the PX4 Storm. Is this a pistol we even asked for? See, in 10 years or so working behind a gun counter, I don't think I've sold one, nor do I know anyone that even owns one. So that begs the question, why would Beretta release a new one? But today, we're gonna find out with none other than Mr. Ernest Langdon. Threat. All right, everyone, welcome to the show. Very good to be here today. We're in uh, the glorious state of Arizona, which is very different than Utah in the winter. And uh, hey, you know, <laughs> freaking t-shirts. Can you beat this winter? Freaking t-shirts and shit, right? you know? Um, so anyway, we're here with uh, Ernest Langdon. I can't believe you've never been on the show before. It almost feels like a crime that we haven't had you. No, we you tried yet. before. And, and actually got snowed work. out. We actually had a legit blizzard that yeah, shut the airport down. Because yep. so, we were going to film in the hellscape of Utah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. But maybe, maybe it worked out for the better because we've got a new gun that we're talking about today. The sort of new and updated um, Beretta PX4. So we'll be covering that and shooting some of our first rounds yep. on it. Um, and yeah, a lot to cover. But I guess before we get into that, I feel like pretty much everyone's going to know who you are, but we don't want to make assumptions. So maybe give a little intro to you and Langdon and background and stuff. And yeah, Ernest Langdon. We run a, my wife and I run a small company uh, called Langdon Tactical Technology. We <clears throat> operate out of Mesa, Arizona right now. Uh, we specialize in uh, customizing guns and our tag is custom without compromise. So we want to customize gun without compromising reliability, durability, all those kind of things. And mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of our, our, our base right now. Um, probably best known for Beretta work. Sure. Uh, yeah. The 92, um, the low RDOs on the 92, but that's a big deal. Also the 1301 shotgun, which uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to shoot some. Yes. Um, and uh, we also work on Glocks and HKs, as you guys know. We mm -hmm. have the low mm -hmm. RDO on the red dot on the, the HKs. We customize guns. Yeah. We sell parts for those customized guns. And a lot of n fairly niche, niche guns, yeah. I, I would say, which is uh, yeah, kind of neat. I'm know. trying to compete with the mainstream you know, things. But we also try to do, uh, I think uh, my marketing guy came with us, all the Marshall without the art. This seems so Albany like Marshall. a dig. I, I feel like there's a ton of art in what you guys do. Yeah, I know, but we're they, there's also no like extra holes in the slide. Yes, lightning cuts and yada yada yada. And That's fair. It's all practical. That not, I'll yeah, take yeah, that. Yeah, I'll take that. Gold plated and I get whatever. where you're going with yeah. it. Like yeah, so because we have people that are like, oh, you should do X Y Z, and we're like, why? We don't need to do that. Yeah. yeah, but quick a first, but first a quick message. That's what I meant to say there. Yep. Oh my goodness, let me tell you guys about belts, okay? Um, they're good. If you don't wear a belt, you're a freaking psychopath. Seriously, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Uh, the belts we use are what? Segura, the best belts on the planet. This right here is the light inner belt. Yep. This is what I EDC with. This also stacks with my battle belt or yes. the battle wagon. Wagon, okay. yes. This layers on top of that. I wear this every single day. And if we're on the range, I throw that battle wagon on top of it. Yep, same thing. There's the uh, emissary belt. That's kind of the mainstay actually, really is the emissary belt, um, which is good for EDC. If you like something a little bit more rigid, um, that would be perfect for EDC. Um, and or a lot of times I wear that at the range just because a little bit of, you know, you start throwing on AR mags and, you know, yeah. pistols and all that kind of stuff. It's like the little rigidity mm -hmm. um, is good. But anyway, uh, code is 1911 syndicate. You guys can plug that onto the Segura website. That'll save you 10% off to those of you who have used that and picked up belts. Glad to hear it. We love hearing those comments. Back on with the video. So we're here talking about the PX4 mm -hmm. and a newly updated one, right? Mm -hmm. It'd be the Gen 2, I guess we can call it. I, I know that the acronym is GSC, but can we just <coughs> simplify it to Gen 2? Is that fair? Or I not? mean, if, if, you, if you want to, yeah, it's definitely the second generation of the compact carry and the carry guns. Okay. So with the, the, the CC or the compact carry 2 and the GSD, which is the 
kind of an updated version of the, the, the full size carry. Okay, which we'll get into the updates here in a little bit, but mm -hmm. let's go back a little bit. Why PX4? And the reason why we're gonna ask that is, you know, before all this, I worked by a gun counter for a long time, 10, 11, 12 years. Mm -hmm. I have not sold a single PX4, mm -hmm. not one. Really? So the question is, Ernest, why PX4? Uh, so really good question. Uh, this whole thing started for me, um, I think it was 2014, 2015. I was looking for a smaller traditional double action carry gun. And that's the when the Storm came out. No, it was, it's been around Early. since 2004. Well, the first one was, I thought the Storm was released. The PX4 Storm was in 14. Am I off on that? No, it's, oh. it's always been the PX4 Storm. Oh, my bad. Okay. Yeah. I've, um, I was thinking about tricking out a 92 compact, trying to get a smaller like carry gun coming into summer. Um, and there was all these little compromises that I needed to make because the elites didn't exist yet. We didn't have dovetail front sights, didn't have a G model, didn't have a bunch of things that we now have with the 92. Um, so I was at the NRA show, <coughs> I'm at the Beretta booth playing with the PX4 Compact. And I start you know, like, yeah, it's kind of cool. The trigger's not bad on this gun. You know, these, these levers are too big. And they're like, ah, oh, we make stealth levers. And I'm like, oh. I didn't know that. I mean, I know you guys made this. We make extended mag buttons. We make all these different things for the gun. And I was like, oh, I should get one of these. So I went to the Virginia Arms there in Virginia, bought a gun and started shooting it. And it turns out it shot really, really well. And I was like, there's something to this gun. I, how come I did not know that? Mm -hmm. um, so I got a couple more of them. I started playing with them. I started messing with the triggers. And I shot the first gun, I think I put like 54,000 rounds through Holy in about 18 shit. months, just shot the snot out of Good it. It became my great. main line gun. I shot it for all my classes, demos, all this different stuff. It, it had like, you done any mods to it or just stock work. gun? Okay, yeah, I'd done, I'd done a, a trigger job to it. Uh, I think I ended up stippling the, the grip, kind of like some of these are stippled. Um, and I put, uh, I started with Trijicon HD sights. I think it was, uh -huh. was the first ones I put on there. And then I ended up playing with some other stuff, but I put the stealth levers on, I put a lot of the factory parts on it. But that, I mean, there wasn't really any other parts to put on the gun. Not a lot of aftermarket support. Yeah, it just, yeah. it had the stuff Beretta made, which was quite a few things. The ergonomics were really good. So I stippled the grip, you know, a couple other things and <coughs> shot it like exclusively to like, like, oh, let me break this thing and then we'll find out what the weak point is. And again, 18 months later, I was like, you know, this thing's pretty, Amazing. Yeah. So uh, anyway, Beretta has that gun, I think. I gave it back to them. Uh, but I still have the original gun that was my carry gun for like 18 months. Hmm. Um, so that started with the compact. And then okay. I was like, the compact is great, but I haven't done anything with the PX4. It's, is it as good? And they're like, well, yeah. So 2016, I think, I got a gun from Beretta right after I moved here. 2017, actually. And I did a Beretta sponsored it. I bought the gun from Cabela's. I went to the Cabela's up here in Glendale, I think it was, and bought a PX4 off the shelf, PX4 full size. And they paid for the ammo, and I put 50,000 rounds through that gun in a year. Holy shit. But I'm, yeah. I'm just impressed at the damn round count that you're yeah. able to <laughs> shoot. Holy well, which was, is, shit. Which is it, does, it, sounds, it sounds better than it actually was. It turned into a chore. Yes. 50,000 rounds in a year. Everybody's like, oh, he shoots 100,000 rounds a year. I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. He ain't having fun no more. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. that's that's interesting because that, that amount that you shot that first year is a third of what the initial testing was on the PX4. Because those went 150,000 rounds without a single stoppage during testing. Is that so true? You yeah. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I know so that you shot a third of that in your first year mm -hmm. running yep. that gun. The interesting thing about this gun that I found out was built to be a 40 to start with. It was, you know, built back when 40s were the thing. Mm. So the gun was built to be a 40 caliber gun, and Beretta built it <coughs> to make it a uh, the the spec on the gun is 20,000 rounds with no parts changes. And uh, when they change anything on the gun, their validation product pro process is five guns, 20,000 rounds a piece. And no, you know, they clean it and lube it and that's it. Uh, and if the gun doesn't hold up and that's in 40, mm. so nine millimeter for this thing. Is sure, nothing. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. Right. Huh. So that is, the, there's a lot of things that people don't know or realize about the gun. Beretta threw a lot of money at, in engineering at uh, building this gun and um, it is by far the most underrated gun that Beretta makes, if not one of the most underrated guns on the market. Okay, well, maybe we'll talk about the new 
the, the new kid on the block now. Yeah. yeah. Okay, everyone, if you're looking for any ways to support the channel, um, good on you, you know? Uh, YouTube creators you. got it tough enough these days, especially the gun ones, so yeah. appreciate that. Um, we do have our Patreon. That's a great way if you like um, behind the scenes stuff, if you like, ooh, we got a good little behind the scenes clip out here today. Um, yeah. But um, that, we've got special swag, Zippos, all that kind of stuff. Um, early access to product releases when we did the Syndicate watches and uh, whiskey and other things like that. Hey, Patreon gets first access to that kind of stuff, and hey, that's the way the world works. Yep, you know? and maybe even some like private events or maybe like we invite you out to filming. Which we did, we had recently. Patreon people out here this week filming with us, uh, right? super cool. So anyway, there's that. Last yeah. quick thing, 1911 Syndicate's real estate company, um, operate all over the place. Uh, if you ever need help buying or selling a house, um, not land, uh, definitely not land that's less than $200,000 to be very specific about it that you cannot <laughs> show me the funds <laughs> of. Um, don't ask us about recreational lands to have chickens and build a shooting range on, thank you, please. Um, anyway, check out 1911syndicate.com, back on with the show. Okay, hit it. So we've never shot PX4s and you've got a little theory that you wanna run us through here. So my perception, well, I believe you'll see. Um, I think the PX4 is one of the softest, flattest shooting guns pound for pound on the market, okay? Um, so what we've got is three guns up here. We've got a P30, which is a great gun, mm -hmm. tremendous gun. Um, done up by one, you also. Done up by us, okay. got a red dot on it. All three of the guns have Holosun EPSs on them. All of them have trigger work on them, all that kind of stuff. So we got P30, we got a regular PX4, and then we have the new GSD PX4. Yep. Okay, so this is the G Super Duty that we're talking about today. So one, two, three, and that way you can shoot them literally back to back, loaded with the same 115 grain federal ammunition, and you can, you can perceive and shoot, put one down, pick another one up, shoot, put it down, pick the other one up, and then there'll be a direct comparison okay. that you can go, oh, okay, now I can see the difference. Okay. Yeah. Or at least I believe you'll be able to see the difference. Chris okay. has a LEM trigger in his P30, so that'll be, you know, a slightly different. different thing there. Yeah, but. Yeah. but as far as the recoil impulse goes, sure. I don't, I think you'll be able to tell. Yeah. Okay. How far the sight moves, how quickly then consistently the slide comes back into the same position. That's what we're looking for. Okay. So this should be familiar. A little bit. This gun. That feels familiar. So now the standard PX4. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Don't be mad. <laughs> and then the GSD, right? Yep. Can you tell a difference? <laughs> I mean, it is a significant difference, dude. Right. So, yep. Like these guns shoot incredibly smooth. But do do this Dang. one. I want to do, do this one for you. So okay. load this one up. Um, load these back up. And that is bananas, dude. Jake, you'll do the same. Yeah, yeah. Dude, you gotta run them back and forth like that. That's the way to I, do it. I, I'm very curious to see. And you can, can you, I mean, then you were like, could you shoot that gun? My perception is you're like, holy fuck, that gun moves. And the P30 is a phenomenal gun. It's very a, good shooting gun. gun. Great gun, right? But you'll see. It's huh. like, it's dramatic. I'm trying to reserve, um, you know. <laughs> Opinion. Like, I'm, I'm trying to keep like bias and shit out of this. Like, <laughs> I'm a little mad. Okay. I am a little mad. All right, so P30. Lefty shit. Lefty. So I have this thing where that's where my grip lands. Oh. And so I always require. I can flip that mag button for you. I'll game my grip a little bit. I'll just kind of slightly compromise grip, but. Okay, so I'm gonna go opposite way. 
double action? Well, I'm keeping it apples to apples, so I'm going single. Okay, so definitely softer than mm -hmm. the standard, for sure. Yeah. And then... Yeah, I gotta give it to you. I mean, I don't know, it, it, it gets real tough to put like... Put it in words? To, to put percentages to that kind of stuff, but there definitely is, I would say of the three, the, the new Beretta, first of all, guys, um, we're not paid by the Langdons or Beretta to say all this shit. So <laughs> yeah. we're, we're, we're really doing our, our best here to not like overhype shit, but I would definitely say the new Beretta is the softest shooter out of those three. Oh, um, my. yeah. But by a decent margin, it's like, that's decently softer than the standard. The standard's decently softer than the P30. Uh, you know what? Hang on, I'm curious to do one more. P30 back to back with the new one. That with. Yeah, you, you know, I mean, th th there's, there's a margin there for sure. So here's the thing. Uh, and this is a hard one to explain uh, if, if you talk to really, really shooters that are dialed in, one of the hard things to get across is that if you can tell a difference, it's a significant difference. Yeah. It's so like minor differences is between things like powder loads and stuff, and you get a little bit. It's not like oh, it's not night and day. Yeah, yeah. If you're shooting and you can instantly tell a difference between something, sure, it's a significant difference that's going to carry over into performance right does that make sense yeah 100%. it took a long time to figure that out for me as a you know com competitive shooter and right. you're trying to tweak things and you're like oh, i think this one's a little better that's it's you know sometimes it's trick of the day like you can change something and you it refocuses you and you get a little bit better but it, when you see something you do something where you i can tell a difference right now immediately yeah. it's a pretty significant difference when that's on 115s also oh, yeah. so i mean that's about as harsh as it's going to get well, on the, the hot air, the ammo, like you get into one of the nice things about that barrel system, the hotter the ammo, when you get into uh, like NATO spec 124, for example, yeah, it that gun cares less about it than other guns. Okay. Does that make sense? Sure. So the recoil impulse change is even more significantly less than you would see with other stuff. Makes sense? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh, very cool. And that's what we've, uh, the guys that like, uh, let's, let's, other guys out there that have reviewed the gun, one of the big comments they see with the PS4 Compact, which you guys haven't shot yet, um, is that it just doesn't care what kind of ammo it is. It's just a flat shooting gun. Um, so we'll shoot that next. But I wanted to, since we had those three guns. Yeah, uh, it's and a good that's little one, test. Huh? Good little test. Yeah, it's one of the things I was actually testing guns. One of the things that hit me in the face, it's been six or eight months ago now, I had a whole bunch of stuff I was having to test, and I had a P30. I was testing something on the P30, um, which I love the P30. I'm not. I, it sounds like I'm saying bad stuff about it. It's no. a great gun. No, no, no. Um, there can be multiple great things in the world. Right, but I when I was I went from shooting the PX4 to testing the P30, and when I started shooting, I was like, oh, okay, Noticeable. yeah, that's that's different. Well, your baseline had now changed. Yeah, well, so when I was you reintroduce something. Yep. Yeah, it's noticeable. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Fascinating. Okay, cool. What's the net? What's the next? Uh, uh, well, you shouldn't eat guys and you shoot the compact. Compact. Okay. okay. Let's do that. So this is the compact, uh, and what I kind of wanted to let you guys see here. New compact. Yeah, it's the new okay. compact. Now, no major design changes, unlike the full size gun. And the, the full size gun took a little while to get Beretta to do this. The compact just now comes with the spurless hammer, the carry levers. A better hammer spring all from Beretta now right so it's out of the box it's a great gun now this particular one obviously we've done all our stuff too um, but I've always perceived the compact is a, a compact gun that shoots like a full-size gun okay it is crazy flat shooting like typically when you go to the smaller version yep. of the gun yeah you pay it for gets it snappier <laughs> yeah. yeah right not the case here in okay. my opinion um, this one's got magwell flat trigger you know the trigger job the whole nine yards done to it and of course um you know we've got the the pro grips on it from talon uh, which is which is a, a really good addition as far as getting control and gripping the gun um and a, 
obviously our red dot cut. So I want you guys to shoot it. And the reason I think the compact is really cool is because now I've got a basically the exact same thing as my full size gun. And there's almost like you can go back and forth between these guns. And it's like, nah, yeah. Okay. It's like you're shooting the same gun. Okay. Cool. Right on. Give it a shot. Uh, Step up, Jake. Jump in. So let's see here. That's compact mag? Yep. Okay. And then what is this? Compact mag. And is I think these size? are all compact. I'll get you a full size. Or did you just grab one? That was my P30 mag. I got a bunch of Don't say anything, let me shoot. <laughs> okay. So here's how I, I, I'd put it here. Jump back back in for camera yeah. sake. So here's the way I put it. The first evolution of going from uh, P30 to previous gen to, to new gen PX, um, I'm noticing differences there. <laughs> going from compact to full size on new gen, I, I there could be a difference. I don't know that I'm sophisticated enough as a shooter to pick it up. And that's that's the whole point. Yeah. The, so I now mean, it's you a got slim. a gun that you can whoop, stick in your pants. Yeah. That's smaller, compact, but it shoots like the full size gun. Yeah. And that's what. And previously, I would almost argue that the compact was softer shooting than the full size gun. Which is fascinating. Which is unusual. Yeah. But now they're almost identical with the. Hmm the changes that Beretta, we got Beretta to make. Very interesting. Um, so those two guns now, performance wise, the full size grip gives you some benefits from an ergonomic standpoint. Sure. Um, you can draw a full size gun typically faster than you can a compact gun because it's easier to get the grip on a gun. You can typically load it faster. Um, but as far as shootability goes. Pretty damn close. Pretty damn close. Yeah. Enough to make me angry. <laughs> Damn, dude. Yeah, no, I, I've been, and people have not wanted to, uh, for whatever reason, I don't think they've liked the way it looked or, you know, whatever it is, but the way those guns are set up right now, hmm. they're crazy good shooting guns. It's a very nice shooting gun. I want to shoot some more. Go ahead. Yeah. That's, Dark stuff on, go for it, dude. Do it. Grip it and rip it. Dude. <laughs> a little bit more time with that. Like that gun is a fast gun, man. Well, it looks like uh, the Langdon's did it again. <laughs> That's my job. Well, hey, you guys are good at your job. Well, I don't know what's coming up next in the video, but we'll go ahead and move on to that. All right, so from the first gen mm -hmm. to the new gen, Yep. What are the differences? Uh, so on the compact, uh, the big important piece for the compact is it is coming with the carry levers that that uh, myself and one of the guys at Beretta, uh, Ben, designed, which is kind of the Goldilocks lever. It's not too skinny. It's not too fat. It fits right in the middle. Easy to, easy to activate, but not obtrusive and big. Mm -hmm. um, it comes with a lighter hammer spring, a D model hammer spring to give it a better double action trigger pull, which they didn't previously. And it comes with a spurless hammer on the compact. So the low profile hammer and all of those things were options that you had to get if you bought a gun before. Mm -hmm. Now the gun comes with all of those things, but still comes with um, uh, the Talon grips in the box. It comes with um, uh, the low profile um, stealth slide stop comes with the oversized mag button, all of that good stuff. The big difference being the sights on both of these guns now, Beretta in Italy is not doing the tritium sights. So you're not spending extra money for the updated sights. You can still get them, but Italy is not putting them on the guns anymore for reasons that they have with their version of the EPA. Um, so they're coming with an orange uh, front, front sight and a plain black rear sight. So it's cool. a great sight picture. Uh, so that's the compact, the full size, same thing, carry levers, all the other components that we just mentioned, same sights, but the big difference on the full size gun is it has a heavier profile barrel. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you guys are gonna see, that dramatically affects the recoil impulse of the gun. It's only a few tenths of an ounce heavier than the standard barrel, but because of where it is, <coughs> it's because of where it is, it dramatically reduces the recoil impulse uh, it, of the gun. In some ways, you know, I mean, in 
1911, 2011 world, you know, bull barrels are a thing. I, I know it's not a bull barrel, but mm -hmm. in, to some degree, it's achieving the same concept, which is, hey, we're going to weight this barrel in a strategic area to, mm -hmm. I mean, one, I guess it also does make it a little bit more robust. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, hey, it's weight added in the right places, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and it, 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 it has a big effect on uh, the recoil impulse of the gun, making it much softer, flatter, again, more durable. It's going to be, the gun's going to be less impact on the gun over a period of time because of the fact that the barrel's yeah. heavier. Badass, yeah. badass. Aesthetically, on the outside, guns look more or less the same. Yeah, the, I mean, no the major, profile, like, the slide, and yeah. the frame, and all that stuff is the same. Yeah, <coughs> no. but we're talking functional, which at the end of the day, and we probably maybe said it earlier in the video, I've actually always thought the PX4 is a good-looking gun. Mm -hmm. um, and to be perfectly honest, um, the reason I've always been drawn to a PX4 is because of Inception. Anyone remember Inception? <coughs> yep. Leo DiCaprio. <laughs> so does carry that is actually the reason I've always been interested in PX4, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I remember. It's because it's pretty prominently it was in there. Yeah. It's pretty prominently featured by yeah. Leo DiCaprio in Inception. I always thought that you know I like movie guns, you know, mm -hmm. and I always thought it was cool. That's but fair. Yeah, aesthetically, hey, I still think it's a cool looking gun. It looks pretty much like it did before. But hey, design wise changes, hey, that's at the end of the day kind of the stuff that matters, you know. Right. So cool. Yeah. So the guys uh, at Absolute Machining came mm -hmm. up to us. Actually, this started uh, at the, the NRA show, and they were like, hey, we want to build some stuff. And I said, well, I have an idea that I've wanted to do for a long time, uh, but I don't have the time to put into it. Uh, so it basically was like here. Um, and they took it and ran with it, and did just tremendous stuff. So basically, it's a rail-mounted compensator, which is not really anything new. Rail-mounted compensators have been around a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Typically, the port configuration doesn't give you the what you want. Um, a lot of times, they don't. You don't get the, the the recoil reduction that you would expect from a compensator. Um, and I would say that a rail mounted compensator typically is never going to be as good as a barrel mounted compensator. PX4 is unique in that the barrel rotates when the gun unlocks. So. You, a, a barrel mounted compensator is a big problem. It's either going to get too tight, you won't be able to ever get it off, or it's going to loosen itself up, mm -hmm. yeah. depending on what you do with the, the threads. And it's going back and forth, so either one could happen, really. So a rail mounted compensator is a good answer to that. Now they did something really cool here where they took the flashlight and they mounted it directly to the compensator. So the profile of the gun is the same as it would be with a light on it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get any bigger uh, to get so it's not like a lot of them where you'll see they'll put a rail below yeah, and the mounts, light sits and then low. the light sits way low and then you get holster compatibility issues and all that other kind of stuff so they did a great job on that um, the other thing that's really cool about it in my opinion <clears throat> is because it's a rail mounted compensator nothing changes on the gun the point of impact doesn't change we don't need different recoil springs all of those things function and work extremely well because it's not affecting the unlocking of the barrel. Yeah. Sure. Whereas a barrel mounted compensator, especially on a tilting John Browning system, that's the fat kid on the other end of the seesaw, it doesn't want to work. So you end up having to play games with recoil springs and you know, lock up and other kinds of things that make them work really well. But in this particular case, it works. So all we have to do is we put our compensator on the end, make sure it latches in place. I've got a flashlight and a comp makes for a really sexy look. I was going to say, aesthetically, very pleasing right? sort of gun. That has very John Wick vibes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it, like, I think it makes the PX4 look like a better looking gun. 100%. Oh, absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. It improves it. But, here we go. These are full size mags. Wait till you shoot that Joker because it works really well. <laughs> yeah, that's a great aesthetically looking. a very good looking. And, and also of note that mm. you know if you live in a, in restricted states, God rest your soul. Um, yep. Problem solved. Yep. Because yep. you don't have to worry about the threaded barrel. No. Right. It's fifty state legal. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You know what's cool is it's also not so aggressive. You know some comps you're like, damn dude. Like yeah. I mean you're just granted it's staying flat, but. God, you're sending it down. Yep. It's yep. pretty gentle in its approach. <laughs> Boy, and if you see, um, Crispy Kid, run a few more rounds and back up and see if you can capture what's happening above. The, 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 the gases the, are yeah. coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hit. There you go. That's what? Distance call it, what do you think? Uh, 120 probably. 
High, high and right. Low and That's left. Off. Hit. Yep. Hit. Yeah. I mean, very easy gun to be accurate with. Trigger makes that a lot easier. In the nick of time. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very nice shooting gun. That's a very, very nice shooting gun. What do you think of that that trigger, trigger on that gun? I would. Yeah, it's excellent. It's really excellent. Tr look, check the reset on it. The pre-travel and the reset on it. Money. Dude. Money. What's the weight on that single action, you think? Uh, that, I believe, I mean, I don't know that. We got, what, six guns on the table? Yeah. Most of them are around three pounds. Boy, I would have thought that was even lighter than that. Well, so it's it's about half the weight is in the take up and the other half is in the break. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because there's pre-travel, so about half of that weight is, is, is recoil return spring and the other half is in the actual trigger break itself. So the total is. weight is about three pounds. Yeah. You can't tell me that's not an aesthetically pleasing gun. I've actually always found the PX4 to be a good looking gun, yeah. ironically. Some I've, oh, I've always like thought it, it was a cool looking yep. gun. Um, never but owned that one. That looks a lot better, doesn't yeah. it? That, however, is badass looking gun. Yep. Yeah. Seeing that's something I was gonna talk about later is, in my opinion, and I've seen some other guys, you know, years ago reviewing the PX4, that their theory is it never kind of caught on because aesthetically it's not a good looking gun. Mm -hmm. I am in that camp. I don't think they're a good looking gun yeah. until you start making some modifications. Yeah, and no, then they I mean, start to kind of morph and evolve into a very good looking gun. Yeah, like I I think this gun right here, when you when you put all the pieces and parts on there, yep, the magwell, yep. the the like this brings it finishes you bringing the gun to yep. where it should have would have been aesthetically. So I think it's it's a and didn't really. I also admit, fully admit that I didn't like the way the gun looked. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll fully admit, I didn't like the way the gun looked, but when I started shooting it and developed an affinity for the way the gun shot, it became more attractive. Grew on you. It grew on me. I was like, oh, this is good looking. In my head, I know how well I can shoot that gun. You fall in love with a girl because of her personality. Yeah. Next thing you know, you're like, she's hot as shit. Yeah. Like, you know. Right. It's <laughs> Ashley from Chili's. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Okay, we'll go ahead and move on with the video now. So now that we've gone over kind of you know, the updated version, the previous version, why PX4, what does Langdon do to the PX4 to enhance it even more? So we have been doing trigger work to the PX4 for a long time. Um, uh, so that's very right out of the gate. And we obviously, or not obviously, but we also have our low dot, low red dot RDO system. So we have a plate system that allows us to mount a red dot really low to the slide. We have a lot of different uh, options for that. Now new coming in now are several features that we have not had in the in the past. Uh, the first one I want to mention is the, the flat trigger. Um, Gray Guns built this flat trigger for us. We're very appreciative of them. We've been doing flat triggers from Gray Guns and mm -hmm. other components from Gray Guns on our P30s and yep. P2000s and yep. other guns for years. Yep. And I went to them and asked them, hey, can you think you can do this? And they're like, oh, absolutely we can. Cool. Right. And so they did a tremendous job. And we went through, I think, four or five prototypes till we got all the curvatures and radiuses and everything to where it, it is what it is. So super happy with that project. Yeah. Second, uh, mag wells, um, mag extensions and base plates from Springer Precision. They, again, same thing, went to them and said, hey, can you do this? We really want this. We already do stuff with them for the 92 and the, and the PX4, but we have their updated version of the mag extension and mag bottoms and a mag well designed specifically for the full size and the compact PX4s. It works splendidly well. I mean, mm -hmm. it is it is amazing. And I think it makes the gun look a lot better. It I mean, is. It just looks. <laughs> well, it's not overly big. Mm, right. Which, you know, the you know big competition mag well, sometimes you're like, hey, it might be super effective, but man, it does not look good. Right. <laughs> like that. Yeah. It's a good but looking, you know. It's good it looking. is fast. It is a, it's impressively fast how, you can, how well you can reload the gun. And then on top of that, the thing that I, that I think everybody's gonna love is the compensator, mm -hmm. okay? So this compensator 
um, is a rail mounted compensator. The cool thing about this compensator is the fact that it doesn't affect the function of the gun. All it does is act as a compensator and it is basically made to bolt on an X300 directly to it. So it doesn't increase the profile of the gun other than the compensator piece of it. So holsters that are designed to hold almost any gun with the flashlight will do the same thing with this compensator. Mm -hmm. And the compensator works extremely well without affecting function, without affecting reliability, without affecting point of impact. Have you, so you can it, take it off and put it back on and- Good to go. Good to go. Do you know off the top of your head if there's holster compatibility for, for that? Uh, I already know there are several. If they are, the holsters like the Filster Floodlight and uh, Tier 1's uh, MSP holster works great. Yeah, okay, cool. yeah. great, yeah. So, I, I mean, you get a gun and mm -hmm. holster compatibility is important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of companies that uh, they put a gun out and they're like, ah, someone will figure out how to make a holster yeah. and everyone's like, so just forget about us, huh? Like, you know. So we already know with, the, you know, those two for right out of the gate and there's probably others. I'm pretty sure that um, you can, it will work or you can make it work with the uh, Omnivore. Is it the Omnivore? I don't know that one. The holster from uh, Blackhawk? Yeah, Blackhawk Omnivore. I, yep. I have not. It's a universal <laughs> duty holster. Yeah, okay. it's got a push button on it, but it locks onto the light. The light. Okay. But it, the front of it is relatively yep. large. Um, so those are the those are the major things that we are launching. The Magwell, the flat trigger, uh, the compensator and all that, please, plus all of the other you know, things that we're already doing to the gun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the light and trigger and things of that sort. Yeah, yeah. improved okay. double action, single action. We got, well, you guys got to play with the, the, the match hammer version of the gun, which is the um, the hammer that uh, takes up some of the pre-travel. So there's very real pre-travel in the trigger and there's, you know, super short reset because we already have the optimized performance trigger bar in there. Yep. Yeah. So we've got several, a bunch of features that we already have and that people are already familiar with. So we can put a tremendous trigger on the gun. I mean, I believe amazing trigger on the gun. Mm -hmm. um, we put the magwells uh, on the gun now. We can put red dots on the gun. We can put a compensator on the gun. We can do all of those things. It, well, makes, it makes for an amazing shooting package. Yeah, well, it, it, and what's pretty cool is typically a, a, a new, I, I know it's not a new gun, but it's an updated version of an existing gun, so I'm mm -hmm. going to call it a new gun. But it's like, you know, oftentimes a, a new gun comes out and then everyone, it's like when a vehicle comes out. Mm -hmm. Vehicle comes out and then everyone waits around for the aftermarket to catch up and provide some support. What's cool is, hey, new gun comes out and you guys are like, hey, we're already here and yep. uh, we're like, we, we've either been doing it for a while. We've either mm -hmm. got them or we're ready to go right now. It's like, hey, hell yeah, that's that's very, very cool. Yeah. You know, I think that uh, 2024 is going to be the year of the PX4. A lot of people are going to start shooting this gun and they're going to realize what a great gun it is, how, yeah. how flat, how soft shooting. There is a underlying group of guys that are out there already shooting them. <clears throat> Jeez. I, I, out there already shooting that really, really like them already. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm hoping this gun looks better with the magwell on it. It looks better with the yep. compensator on it. Oh, looks, no doubt. People are going to start picking it up and start shooting it and going, you know what? This thing's impressive. Well, you know, it, it, and I'll say this and it, I'm, I'm, you know, <laughs> this video came about because I kind of had the notion of, I believe that double action, single action guns are gonna make a resurgence. Mm -hmm. And- Hammer fired. Ha yeah, hammer fired, you know, DASA guns. I believe people think of them as like, hey, they're retro cool. They're not relevant. They're just retro cool and it's something I like having in the collection. So I don't shoot them. I just think it's cool to own a 226 or a PX4 or whatever the, whatever the gun is, right? Mm -hmm. But I think something in, you know, it's a, also a compliment to you guys. I think something that you guys have done incredibly well, if you look at the, the roster of what you guys offer, a good portion of it is on DASA, you know, mm -hmm. hammer fired guns. Yep. And what you guys are, I think a lot of people's resistance is to these guns that, hey, they might be cool, but again, they're not relevant. And then you guys come in, you start cutting stuff for dots, you start cleaning up triggers, adding this, that, and you go, hey, now you have a gun that was retro cool that is completely relevant in a modern context. And I think that that's really cool. And I think that that's one of the reasons you're gonna see that resurgence of, of some DASA stuff. I agree with you. I think DASA is going to see a comeback because once you start shooting it, all the other triggers feel like garbage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it, like, I almost 
only <clears throat> shoot hammer fire guns. Now, granted, it's a lot of 1911s, 2011 mm -hmm. stuff like that. I've got a P30L from you guys. You know, it's like I love hammer fire guns, man. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love a hammer fire gun. Yep. I just yeah. think they're awesome. Mm -hmm. I think they're real world, like right here, right now, awesome. Yep. And I would have never thought that possible until I got my P30 from you guys, mm -hmm. hammer fire DASA gun, mm -hmm. right? And then when we were doing this video, I am in the category of. I wasn't interested in the PX4, and this sounds silly, but again, working behind a gun counter, you hear this often, like, mm -hmm. I don't want that gun because it's aesthetically not pleasing. Mm -hmm. I viewed that kind of with the PX4, mm -hmm. but with your modifications, the enhancements, the whole package, I think that's probably one of the most aesthetically pleasing guns now. It yep. went from one end of the spectrum to the other. Um, on top of, like you guys say, customization without compromise. I mean, I'm thousands of rounds into that P30. I plan on doing the same with this. And in your experience, no issues whatsoever. So it's a great offering to a older gun brought to almost like a resto mod car. Yeah, in many ways. Sure. Yep. Yeah. 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 Awesome. I think it's very true. All very right. Cool. With that, we'll take you to a couple final thoughts. All right, Jake, we're out here. We're in the wilderness. If we got in a self-defense scenario, I would hope you had firearms legal protection. So would I which is a concealed carry slash more self-defense insurance. If you're ever in a legally justified self-defense scenario, they cover you. Yeah. Not only do they cover you attorney's fees, things of that sort, if you happen to make a little mess, they have a whole team that comes out to clean that up, Jake. Yeah. They also offer a couple different packages. Yeah, um, that would be uh, one like myself. If you're like a guy that uh, would like to insure yourself and you don't necessarily travel that much, you know, to be, per can I be perfectly honest? I actually have the plan that takes me out of state too. Oh, do you? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I you always, lied to I everyone. I always joke around that like I don't leave my house. I do, I've left my house right now. I'm not fair, in my home. Point, I don't live point. here. Yeah. Um, but uh, so they have the one that, hey, covers it, you, not necessarily family members, but you know, in all 50 states. Again, you gotta be legally, you know, caring. You can't be a, a criminal and expect the thing to cover you. So that's yeah. the way the world works. You've got a different one. I do. I have the married traveler plan is what I call it. That is definitely not the name, but I am married. So my wife is covered under that. Yeah. If heaven forbid she's ever in a self-defense scenario, she's good. Now I travel for work a lot. If I'm in a state that I'm legally allowed to carry in, something pops off. I'm also covered in that state. Our code 1911 saves you about a third off each package. Go check them out. Thanks for your support.